Hey everyone, George here and welcome back to the channel. So today I want to talk to you about a couple of different products that I uh, use all the time. Uh, the first one would be Seachem's Prime, uh, which is a wonderful conditioner uh, that I would recommend to anyone. And also API Stress Coat, which also is absolutely fantastic. Uh, but they do have different applications. So when we come back, we're going to talk about that. Hang in there with me. And we'll be right back. Aquatic Concept Sponsors Project Piaba. So what I would like to stress to you in this video is that both of these products, number one, I want to get it clear uh, that I love both of these products and I do use both of these products and I don't use them both at the same time. I use them for different applications. Now my main product that I use all the time is Prime and the reason for that is if you want to knock down any kind of problems or uh, concerns about ammonia, nitrites, and nitrates. This is a short-term uh, solution to getting those things under control with any water change that you might do. So in that sense, I go to Prime simply because uh, it does uh, exactly what it's supposed to do. It's a dechlorinator and uh, takes ammonia and uh, uh, chlorine out of your um, uh, public water. If you're using RO water or something like that, then obviously those are not concerns for you. But if you're on public water and uh, all your water parameters other than the fact that you have some chlorine in there, this is really a fantastic product in the sense that um, it's it does a fabulous job of, of doing all of those things. Now, uh, I want to stress up front here also that both of these products I am not sponsored by uh, either API or Seachem so I don't want you to think that I'm doing this video based on me being paid to do that I'm doing this based on my personal experience and what I like about these two products and some things that came up recently that made me want to do this video because uh, literally both of these products worked in the sense that they helped me to understand a little bit more about the value in each one in a very different way. So when it comes to Seachem Prime, uh, the very first thing that uh, you're going to think of is it's a dechlorinator and as I said it does a little bit of knocking down uh, any ammonia nitrites or nitrates that might be in your water and it's a short-term solution. I don't want you to think that this is a fix-all for problems that you may have with your tank with a cycle or anything like that but this is a good product if you're uh, doing regular maintenance on your aquarium and it's also a good product if you are starting a new aquarium and you're using other products like stability and stuff like that to kind of get your cycle going on your tank, the nitrogen cycle. But again, this is not a product that you would use to uh, go out and buy a fish tank tomorrow and start putting fish in there and using this as a way of uh, making the water safe for those fish because that's, that's not going to happen and it's a very dangerous game that you're playing, especially if you are playing around with expensive fish like these guys here, the discus fish and so forth. So uh, I want to I make sure you understand that. Now we're going to talk a little bit more about why this product is not always good and uh, why the API product uh, may be better in some cases. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. But let's talk about API first, uh, what this does and uh, does not do. And uh, the first thing I would tell you is that this is a more natural product. It has a dechlorinator in there and conditioner in there uh, that is fantastic. Works just as good as Prime does in that regard. But it also has some added features to it. It has aloe vera in there and 
some other very natural products that uh, I think are very good for helping fish along uh, that are stressed out, uh, fish that are perhaps uh, dealing with some kind of a um, breakdown of the slime coat on their bodies for whatever reason. Uh, this can be from overuse of medications, this can be from uh, getting new fish into your tank and uh, you know absolutely you got to quarantine your fish but what I'm saying is even in your quarantine tank this can be an absolutely wonderful product to lower the stress in your fish a little bit and give them a little bit of that aloe vera now I didn't really believe in the aloe vera thing for a very long time simply because I didn't understand uh, some of the uh, uh, the natural uh, and legitimate, I would say, natural and legitimate effects that it does have on the natural slime coat of your fish. This is a wonderful product, just like it is for human beings. If you get a sunburn or you get something like that, you get a little scrape or uh, something that you don't want to get an infection, uh, what is the first thing that we do in nature? Uh, we are provided with things that are natural and the number one thing that I've always used uh, for a sunburn or anything like that or a small scrape is aloe vera. So they mix that in here a little bit and you would think to yourself, I mean, isn't that detrimental to the fish? It's really, really not. In fact, uh, there's been some studies to show that aloe vera, if used in a tank uh, to heal um, let's say scratches or something like that, something has happened to your fish, maybe in, in moving them around or whatever. Uh, we know that discus in particular can be very excitable and so can angelfish. And the number one thing that can happen to them in that move is for them to get damaged in some way. The second thing that can happen is the overuse of medications that can burn the skin, I'm going to put this down because there's no reason for me to hold on to it, but uh, one of the things that can happen is uh, the burning of the skin, uh, whether that's from transport and uh, you just getting the fish, I recommend API to start out with simply because it does have the aloe vera properties in there that are very good for helping uh, your fish to heal from any kind of ammonia burns that might be from feces or whatever that are in uh, the water as they're traveling and uh, get those kinds of things squared away. Oftentimes as well, if uh, fish are being caught and bagged, sometimes there's damage from nets that are simply uh, you know, not uh, terribly damaging to the fish, but they maybe have a minor scratch on them or they may get into your tank and they may go kind of crazy in the tank uh, for the first day or two because they're scared of you and oftentimes they'll run into rocks and sticks and things like that that are escaping your tank and uh, I find that this product is absolutely amazing for that. Now also the overuse of medications can burn skin, gills and all kinds of uh, uh, things like that that uh, cause your fish discomfort and uh, cause them to either overcreate slime coat or to lose slime coat which is a protective barrier on your fish if you don't know about this I'm going to explain it a little bit to you slime coat is so important on your fish because it is a uh, it's just like your skin it is basically um, a layer on the fish's body that is a protective layer against, a natural protective layer against uh, any kind of bacterial, fungal, uh, or uh, damage to the fish uh, by, uh, I would say, injuries of uh, small proportions. I wouldn't, I wouldn't use this for major injuries. Uh, that's another level that we're not gonna get into today. But if you have these basic things that are going on, and uh, you need something very quickly, what I recommend is starting out using in your quarantine tank the API and then moving them over to Prime as they get into the community tanks and so forth because 
in those quarantine tanks is when it's most likely that you're going to have these problems. Now, I'm going to explain to you the reason why I, I got into this video in the first place, as I said in the beginning, I was going to explain that to you, is because recently, uh, if you follow me on this channel, you know that I did a deworming on uh, one of my main tanks. In other words, uh, actually it was a show tank in my home, and uh, it, it was something that I did a little bit too close to another type of medication that I was using uh, of a uh, nature of fungal and bacterial and that was called Seachem Polyguard. Now what happened is when I used the Seachem uh, Polyguard, I used it for three days and uh, the problem went away. The fish uh, looked very clean and healthy at that point and I had a scheduled dewormer three days later after using that and I did water changes in between, I did several and uh, thought that the tank was certainly clear of any kind of medications that were in there uh, such uh, regarding the polyguard and that sort of thing so the dewormer which was a scheduled dewormer that I do every four months uh, typically I would use metronidazole uh, which is my go-to thing, but um, what happened is, is I didn't have any metronidazole. I had another product that I had used before, and I had a lot of faith in this product because I've never had any problems with it, and that was Cloverleaf Absolute Wormer Plus, uh, a great product if used properly, and if used at a distance from other medications that you may have in your tank. So. One of the things that happened to me recently was that, as I said, I had been using the Polyguard. I had done several water changes in between. It was about four or five days after. I do water changes every day on my tank, so I thought uh, for sure that the Polyguard was gone. Not only does it say that it dissipates after three days and... Uh, I learned very quickly that the dissipation of a medication in a tank, in other words, it not being of any use any longer, doesn't mean that the medication is not in the tank. And I want to stress that to you because this is a very serious learning curve that you and I can learn together. Um, I'm learning things all the time. I'm not perfect. I, I do a lot of videos here on things that are important for fish keeping and so forth and I show you a lot of beautiful tanks and a lot of things uh, that make people want to go out and get into this hobby but at the same time I always share with you whenever I make mistakes because um, it's important for me uh, to be honest with you and truthful with you about the things that I do that are negative and impact my fish so what happened is, is I did this dewormer and uh, my fish within, uh, you know, five to seven hours were acting incredibly uh, insane in the tank. They were head standing, some were laying on the bottom of the tank completely. Uh, I knew right away that something was wrong, but I really didn't know what that was. The only thing I could think of was I had just put this dewormer in there. I made no association between the dewormer and the polyguard, which had been used just a, uh, a week or so earlier. That polyguard was still had residue in my tank. And what happened is when I mixed the dewormer in there, there was a toxic um, uh, explosion sort of that went on in the tank and made my fish extremely sick. They started shredding their uh, shredding their slime coat uh, they were uh, strangely enough they were eating and doing all of the normal things whenever I would feed and so forth and the first thing I did obviously was do a major water change which I learned was a really bad thing to do because I should have done smaller water changes and so forth and uh, what I didn't know is that um, keeping some of this API on hand here 
uh, was really the lifesaver. I didn't really know that at the time. I talked to someone and they were mentioning aloe vera to me, so I mentioned API to them and said, you know, I've, I've got some of this on hand that I use in my quarantine tanks. I don't use it in my primary tanks or my community tanks, show tanks and stuff like that. Um, would this be something that you would suggest to me? And a gentleman who's been doing this for a very long time told me that aloe vera is extremely effective in uh, fixing the slime coat uh, on fish that have been damaged by medications uh, and all these other things that we talked about earlier. And this is what had happened to me is I had burned uh, the fish to the point where um, I didn't lose any fish. I want you to know that there, there's a happy ending to this and uh, I don't want to dive into all that because we only have so much time. I want to stay on point about these two products and uh, give you a sense of uh, why I keep both of them on hand. But anyways, uh, this gentleman had talked to me about aloe vera and told me that he had literally used uh, raw aloe vera in his tanks on occasion whenever he had any kind of problems with bacterial fungal diseases that were attacking the surface of the fish. Now we're not talking about parasitical things because Aloe vera, uh, to my knowledge, does nothing to reduce uh, parasites in uh, your fish as far as gill flukes or uh, white worms or uh, tapeworms or round worms, any of those kinds of things. Uh, they're not going to be uh, killed off by using aloe vera. But what he suggested to me is that when he used aloe vera in its raw form, he could see his fish actually going into this stuff. They liked it so much. It was so soothing to their bodies that he started to use it on a regular basis as far as whenever he would do a water change, uh, he would use a small amount of this to keep his fish um, slime coat in perfect condition. Now, this is something that I never thought about. This is something that, you know, I'm, I'm kind of not a naturalist in the sense that uh, I deal with a lot of the problems that my fish might have over time, and I don't have a lot of problems. I just, most of the time, whenever I have a problem, it's something that I have done myself uh, and created that problem. It's not something that comes from the store, typically, or, uh, you know, you can, you can, think of a number of different things that can create problems in your fish tank. Usually it's something I have done and not thought through and this was a perfect example of using this dewormer so close to the time that I used the Paragard thinking that I had flushed out all the Paragard in the tank and didn't realize that uh, Paragard can be in that substrate and have a chemical reaction with the dewormer and that's exactly what happened here. It was just enough to make it toxic for these fish. The API was an absolute lifesaver. I started right away. Uh, first of all, I talked to some of the people that I go to for medical issues, uh, Gabe Posada. Thank God for that guy. He's an amazing guy down at Watley Discus. Uh, I really uh, appreciate that guy because he's so right on with some of the things that uh, he tells me if there's a problem uh, that's medical he can tell me right away what it is and he tries to tell me don't medicate if you don't have to use medication as a last resort and that's what I've always tried to do now some of the things that I'm learning is is that uh, these medications um, really aren't necessary. There's more natural ways to deal with these things. So basically what I did is I used the API with the aloe vera in it and of course it has a, a, a dechlorinator and conditioner as well and uh, I also used salt which we do not give enough credit to salt. Salt is such an important uh, preventative as well as uh, medicinal treating uh, natural product that we have uh, typically on hand. Uh, if you don't have aquarium salt on hand, which is just basically rock salt, 
run out and get some tomorrow because it's a, a $7 uh, box that's huge and uh, it can be a lifesaver as far as uh, helping your fish to regain their slime coat and heal along with the API um, uh, aloe vera uh, mixture. The two of those things is all that is necessary. There is a uh, tendency for us to get over the top with problems and not think them through and create a worse problem. Now, I learned a long time ago that the worst thing you can do is get yourself into a lather and get concerned to the point where you're doing things and you're not thinking them through. You're not thinking about all the other aspects of your tank. You're just looking at fish that are in trouble and you're telling yourself, I've got to save these fish. When in reality, adding things to the, the tank that are medications that we don't even know if these medications are going to be helpful or not, are just going to make things worse. They're gonna burn your fish even worse. Uh, so going to the more natural things, which I think API, and I don't use Prime for these kinds of things. Like I said, there's nothing in Prime uh, other than uh, knocking down ammonia, nitrites, nitrates, and those kinds of things. It's wonderful for a daily use. It's a dechlorinator uh, and a conditioner that I use. I stand by it. It's a wonderful product and I use it in all of my tanks. As you can see, I buy it by the jug. This is not something that uh, I, I keep around in, in small bottles because I don't, I do a ton of water changes. I have five or six of these jugs on hand all the time. I keep them stocked uh, because it is such a good product. Now I also keep a couple of these around now. I didn't until last week, but I'm keeping a couple of these around now because the world's going in kind of crazy places right now. And I think if you can stock up on some of these more natural uh, products that can be used to medicate uh, or, uh, I don't even want to use the word medicate. If uh, you can use them to uh, therapeutically uh, deal with your fish, uh, it is such a much better way to go. I'm going to tell you what happened. I panicked at first about this and I didn't really know what to do. I'm doing a ton of water changes, 20% twice a day. The fish are not getting any better in this tank that I'm talking about. What happened at that point is, is when I spoke to someone about the aloe vera, they said, go get some API uh, Stress Coat Plus out there and use that to uh, uh, therapeutically try to get your fish to come around. Don't keep adding things to it. Gradually use that along with some salt and also turn up the temperature in your fish tank. Now you got to make sure when you're turning up the, the temperature in your fish tank that your other fish that are in with your discus, which you should be getting fish that are compatible. Uh, I try to keep my tanks, if they're South American, I try to keep them South American. If they're Asian tanks, then I keep them Asian and that sort of thing. I don't like to mix and match fish because of colors and beauty and whatever. I'm more into having an authentic uh, situation in my community tanks where if I have a South American tank, I truly have a South American tank. So most of the time, if you're raising the temperature, uh, most of the fish that you're going to have in there, your Corydoras, your, uh, your uh, Plecos, your Tetras, uh, all of those fish that are dither fish in your tank are going to be able to handle these temperatures if you gradually turn it up because it's therapeutic. Now they may not si show signs that they're having a problem, but I guarantee you that if you burn the discus, you burn these other fish. Surprisingly though, they don't act that way. They seem to recover a little bit quicker and I think that's just because the uh, slime coat on a discus fish is a much more complex slime coat because of the way they raise their young and uh, feed their young off their slime coat. So I think there, there's something to that. I'm gonna research that a little bit more and I'll get back to you in another video about, uh, in fact, I, I planned on doing a, a video about the changing 
uh, conditions of slime coat as uh, discus start to raise their young. Um, many of you probably don't know this, but their slime coat changes three, four, five different ways during the time that they are allowing their babies to feed off from them. So it's a very interesting thing. But getting back to what we're talking about, um, I found that as soon as I figured out that the API with the aloe vera uh, and uh, the conditioner, of course, for the chlorine uh, and uh, the removal of the, uh, of the chlorine from the tank, that product, along with the salt and raising the temperatures, immediately I noticed my fish starting to, uh, I would say within hours, start to come around a little bit. Now, it took about five, six days, and maybe even seven days for all of them to come around. I have one fish that is not 100% there, but I have lost no fish whatsoever. And I, and I attribute it to the API and the aloe vera and the salt with the higher heat. Now I raised my heat up to 90 degrees gradually from 86 to 90 degrees over a couple of day period. You don't want to do that. You don't want to jump from 86 to 90 degrees. You just don't want to do that, especially if you have a good heater that's going to do that very rapidly. Uh, and you must have an air stone in your tank. Anytime you are running these high temperatures, have an air stone in your tank because you're going to need extra oxygen production and that is the only way to get it is to have that water movement and have a good air stone in your tank that is doing that for you. Now I didn't want to make this video long but I hope you understand the differences between these two products. Prime is wonderful for everyday use with tanks that have no problems whatsoever. I stand by that. I've been using it for years. I have lost literally other than discus that have come to me dead uh, from a supplier, I have literally lost two discus over the last five years out of the hundreds that I have simply because I know what I'm doing and I'm very careful not to over medicate. I'm very careful not to do things by shooting from the hip. Now, there's a certain amount of panic that goes with this stuff. I know, I know the feeling when you see your fish uh, in distress and you don't know what to do, uh, there's a tendency to try to do anything you possibly can. The first thing I want you to do is to think about what caused the problem, number one, and number two, how can I solve this problem in the most natural way possible without feeding a bunch of medications into the tank when I don't even know what the problem is. In this case, I kind of knew that because the slime coat was coming off, uh, the fish, and I talk about this in previous videos, and I will make sure that those videos are listed at the end of this as uh, suggested videos for you because it kind of takes you through this whole process with me and gives you an idea of what happened and how I went through these processes that I'm talking about to get to the point where we fixed this problem. I am so happy to report to you that these fish are 100% back to their normal uh, activities. They're eating all the same. I didn't lose even a tetra, a quarry. Uh, I, I didn't lose anything in that tank because I was smart enough not to start throwing medications back into the tank. And uh, I was also uh, given very good counsel by, like I said, Gabe Posada, also a guy named Chip at Wet Spot in Portland, Oregon. He's wonderful as well, very knowledgeable, and both of them suggested to me to go a more natural way with this, and I would see quicker results, and I would also do less damage to the fish. Now, be careful when you're doing salt because you don't want to over-salt your tank. Uh, think about uh, you know going online and maybe doing a little bit of research about salt. There's some wonderful articles about the benefits of salt in water. Some people actually use salt all the time in their discus tanks just to, as a uh, uh, precautionary measure to make sure that their fish are in good health. I don't do that, uh, but I would tell you that if you do, it's, it's not a problem. There's a certain amount of salt that these fish can handle that is not a big deal. But if you're using it for a medical purpose, 
make sure that you do not use too much salt and that sort of thing because you can do damage by doing that as well. A lot of your plants aren't going to handle that and the high heat as well. Some of your plants are not going to handle that. If you are like me with discus fish, you have a small amount of plants that are kind of stuffed between the rocks and the wood and the substrate and easily removed. That's what I was able to do. I removed them. I put them in a bucket of water with a heater and uh, an air stone just to keep them in good shape. And uh, within a few days, I was able to put those back into the tank. I wanted to rescape that tank anyway with, with plants. So this was a, a good excuse for me to do it. Thank you for joining me today. I didn't want to go on and on and on about this, but I want to tell you that this product right here is amazing for everyday use. But if you have a medical problem, man, that API uh, stress coat is absolutely fantastic uh, for taking care of the slime coat on your fish and bringing that stress level down in your tank very quickly and uh, along with the salt and the water changes and the, the turning up of the heat, it's extremely therapeutic. Now, discus can handle all the way up to 95 degrees in some areas of Brazil. I've talked to friends that have collected discus fish down in Brazil in the wild, and they go from anywhere from 86 degrees all the way up to 95 degrees, depending on the tributaries and the parts of the rivers. Uh, that you are looking at and uh, and the reason for that obviously is uh, that nature does what nature does and we should try to replicate that in our tanks whenever we can so again thank you for joining me today I appreciate it leave your comments down below and I will get back to you within 24 to 48 hours also like subscribe comment and share um, a lot of people go through my channel, and I can see this through my analytics, and they uh, are constantly coming back to my channel, but they don't bother to subscribe, and uh, that really uh, is okay because I don't try to make money off this. People all already know that I don't do this for a living. This is a hobby, but I like to make enough money to where I can just pay for the hobby. Uh, that would be nice. I'm certainly not trying to make a living off this. But uh, I want you to know that if you do hit that like button and subscribe, it is beneficial to me in so many ways on the channel here. And uh, I really appreciate that. And again, share the video with your friends because that's how we build the channel as well, is by uh, sharing the video and letting others know uh, things that uh, you might find interesting and whatever. Share them with uh, people that are in the hobby with you and uh, I think uh, that uh, is all I can really ask of you, and I appreciate that. That's not too much to ask, right? It's not too much to ask. So again, thank you for joining me. We will see you on the next one. Until then, we are out of here.